This is Itosha National Park. And this is me, filming some of Namibia's incredible wildlife species. Itosha is a famous tourist destination and home to all kinds of animals. Have you ever wondered how National Geographic documentaries capture these insane sharks? Okay, they simply have all that expensive camera gear they need, right? But I was excited to try it myself with a bit of a challenge. I'm not set up for filming animals. Let me share my little story of Itosha National Park with you and why it's easier than you might think to film African wildlife species. Yeah, I'm just waiting here with my camera, watching out for some good shots, maybe we see some animals. The big question up front, is the media lying to us? Probably not, but let's put it this way. They definitely know what to leave out. Let me explain. The first rule I learned that you can't leave your car without a ranger on your side. That could be the reason why most low budget productions have the same perspective, just like all that TikTok. It makes it all seem like the same kind of safari drive. While big budget productions are literally driving a train around to stabilize their cameras, I went handheld. Shit. But to me, the magic of filmmaking can be in the simplicity. I even came in rain season, when the grass grows high and it's all green. People just love to make Africa appear in warmer color temperatures, which is easy to do. This is what I get out of my camera, and I can simply adjust everything in post. By the way, it's all shot on Blackmagic 4K, but you obviously need much more than that. But just not that high-end camera. <laughs> Bro, that's such a good setup, in it? It's good for filming documentaries, but not that bird-watching kind of setup. Why are these Germans always complaining? Okay, let's keep going. Another key takeaway was the importance of choosing the right season. Here's the deal. Have a look at these water holes. They are like magnets for wildlife. They are part of a clever setup that makes the animals come right up close to us. But when it rains a lot, you rarely spot any animals drinking. Luckily, a bunch of birds showed up. I think it's a black stork or something. I'm not an expert. Just to prove the fact that water holes are a perfect way to film all kinds of animals, a while ago, Raphael has witnessed massive come-togethers of big groups. It's a tourist highlight to see something extraordinary at the water hole. Sadly, not for me. All I got was a marabou. And here I'm shooting on a tripod with the Canon 180mm lens. It's good, but nothing crazy. I also used the cheap adapter and it crops on the MFT sensor and stuff. Bro, this video isn't meant to be a tech review. Yeah, you're right. I wanted to get close. Really, let's keep going. The best part of it is cruising around. Eyes glued to the grass, hoping to spot some animals. I was like constantly filming, even if it's shaky like this. It was kind of a learning to change my idea of what a national park can be. On TV, it seems like the pure wilderness. Meanwhile, I know that park means there's proper dirt roads, toilets and campsites you can stay in. For instance, this fella came quite close and took a snack actually. It is called Southern yellow Built Hornbill. But if I wanted to make a wildlife documentary, I could get rid of this one and only show you this. This is shot on a 35mm lens on MFT like 70mm full frame. Bro, okay, I wanted to say I'm not even in that crazy. I could also just cheat and that is the main learning from that experience. Let me share another example. I knew there was a hyena hiding. I just waited and waited, and I knew it could appear at any moment. And there it is. My heart was shaking, and so was my camera. This is obviously not the most stabilized shot and the perspective from the car I mentioned earlier. But again, I could just like cut here, put it here, and if I get a skilled animator on board, could even have more fun. But the same with this turtle. We just stopped by and made a few shots. But I also could like hide the fact that it just crossed the road. Maybe I should actually do so, let me know in the comments. I also want to share what I learned about today's situation in wildlife conservation. Give me another minute. According to the World Wildlife Fund, 27% of mammals are close to extinction. Especially elephant and rhino poaching is a massive issue in Namibia and many more African countries. The demand for illegal ivory trade persists, highlighting the crucial need for conservation areas today. Maybe you already know. Many items or accessories, including art, musical instruments, chess sets or necklaces are still made from ivory today. I don't want to only point my finger on like Asia or even China. While China banned the legal trade of ivory in 2017, it left a demand and a supply chain. Ivory continues to find its way into various markets globally. Yes, also into Europe and the US. After driving all day, getting to know this hyena, we got a bit of a smelly hint right here. As the sun dipped lower, 
We stopped and there it was, a rhino and its young one. At this point I'm so sorry for not being set up to show you properly. But as you can imagine that was the highlight of my stay in Etosha National Park. Even without being able to catch the money shot. And I also did it for the memory. Parks like Itosha have a long history and I can cover all of that. But let me know if you're interested in this kind of stories and check out the sources. At the end, my journey through Namibia wasn't all about filming wildlife scenery. We used our cameras with the aim to tell stories of Namibians. I think everyone should get the opportunity to travel a national park one day, have fun and enjoy the moment, but show respect for this incredible ecosystem and the people living and working in it. See ya.